Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. From February 4th through the 29th, if you use this promo code, you will automatically be entered into a drawing to win a box of Magic the Gathering Unsanctioned. Also, there is another way to enter where no purchase is necessary. See the link in the description below for full details. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. It is Players Tour America's Weekend, and that's another big Pioneer tournament. As you can imagine, there's some impacts on card prices from that tournament so far. I'm sure there'll be more as the week goes on as well. But that's not all that's happening in the secondary market. There's a lot to talk about it, and we're going to cover it all. Quick reminder, though, before we get into it, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code. Save yourself 10% on orders over $10. And right now, we have a sweepstakes going on, so you might be able to win a Magic the Gathering Unsanctioned box. All the details are in the description below. And whenever you use the promo code, it supports the channel, which I can't tell you how much that helps. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, we'll begin, as we always do, with Standard and your top 15 Standard Legal cards that have lost value this week. Number 15 is Vivian Arcbow Ranger, down 72 cents to $12.99. This is seeing a little bit of Standard play early on. Pioneer, it's still seeing some play there. Golgari Stompy, Hardened Scales, and more. But unless it starts doing something a little more significant in Standard and or Pioneer, this is going to lose more value. Number 14 is Demon of Loathing, down 74 cents to 298. This is one of the cards that you will not find in the Draft Booster Packs. You can find these in Theme Boosters, Collector Boosters, and also the Deck Builders Toolkit. And some of these are good Commander cards, some better than others. But the reason you're going to see a few of these on the list today is because you have to remember... These really started circulating about a week after the regular draft booster packs did. So those cards that you find in draft boosters just got into circulation a little bit faster. These are still trying to find their price point. Number 13 is another card you won't find in the draft booster packs. It's Sphinx Mindbreaker going down 74 cents to 314 this week. Number 12 is Hollowed Fountain from Dissension. It goes down 78 cents to $25. And this original Shockland has been very turbulent recently. It goes up, it goes back down. Seems to still sit around the $23 to $25 mark, though. Ultimately, though, I'm not too surprised to see this go down since additional copies of the Ravnica Allegiance version of the card were distributed in the Wild Bounty Brawl deck. Regardless, the card has been seeing a lot of play recently. In Standard, this is in Azorius Control, which is very popular. Also in Jeskai Fires. In Pioneer, it's in Azorius Control and Spirits Builds, which are very popular there. And it's in other decks in that format as well. It's a big modern card, too. Number 11, Clothis God of Destiny, down 79 cents to 687. This is a mythic, had a pretty high price point during the pre-release time period. It's trying to find its new price point now based on the play it's seeing. It's seeing some play, like nothing crazy though. In Standard, Girl Adventures, Girl Aggro, sometimes a few other decks will run this. In Pioneer, kind of the same story, showing up in decks that are maybe not the most popular, but it still kicks around. Girl Aggro is an example of that, but it's in some other decks there too. In Commander, though, it is seen play in some lands builds and also with Corvold Faker's King. Number 10 is Zathrios Shroud Val, down 85 cents to 682. This is the buy a box promo, but the copy we're talking about today is not the foil version. It's actually the one you'd find in collector boosters, the non foil. Now, so far, this card hasn't seen standard play, which isn't surprising, but it has seen a fair amount of brawl and commander play. I do think it's going to adjust down more, though, before it settles into a price point. Number 9 is Elspeth Undaunted Hero. This is the non-foil copy again that you might find in collector boosters as opposed to the foil that's in the Planeswalker decks. This goes down a dollar this week to $1.75. Number 8 is another Elspeth, Elspeth Sun's Nemesis, down $1.09 to five ninety-two. So even though this is losing a fair amount of value this week, it is seeing a fair amount of play. Azorius Control and Mono White Life Gain are both running copies a lot of the time in Standard now. Pioneer, you might find this in Azorius Control. Modern, most of the time now, this shows up in Banned Snowblade and some other decks there too. Keep an eye on this one. Number seven is Corvold, Fake Curse King, down $1.14 to $14.60. Again, we're looking at the non-foil copy here, the one you'll find in Collector Boosters, as opposed to the foil that's in the Brawl deck. Now, the reason this card has been losing value and most likely will continue to lose value is because it's just a lot easier to get a hold of a Brawl deck now than it used to be. Those are very accessible. They're in circulation a lot heavier than they were a few months back. Now, with that being said, this card is still seeing a lot of play. Standard Jun Sacrifice is still a thing there. Pioneer, there's some Jun Sacrifice decks kicking around in that format too. And of course, this has been a very popular brawl, but more importantly, Commander card. Number six, Terror of Mount Velas. This is another card you won't find in Draft Boosters, going down $1.18 to 4 dollars 
Number five, Idyllic Tutor, the original one for Morning Tide. It goes down $1.28 to $23.83. Of course, this is losing value because it was just reprinted in Theros Beyond Death, but it is a card that is seeing a little Pioneer play right now. You're going to find this sometimes in Pioneer Fires builds, and also, of course, we know this is a good Commander and Brawl card now for Enchantment Heavy decks. Number four is Heliot Sun Crown down $1.33 to sixteen twelve. So this is losing value. However, seeing a lot of play, the main reason it is losing value is because it did have a high price point going into the release week. And at this point, there's more copies getting into circulation especially with the amount of Mythics pulled from all the Collector Booster Packs being opened. However, it might lose a little more value, but I would expect it to stabilize pretty quickly. Now, in Standard, it's seeing play in Mono White Life Gain, but in Pioneer, you're seeing this in a lot of different types of builds. Now, it does combo there with Walking Ballista, which is one of the big reasons this card has been so popular. Heliod Devotion Company builds are running this, of course, and they'll run Walking Ballista as well. There's different types of Mono White Devotion builds also running this. You'll find this at Hard and Scale, sometimes Kethis Combo. In Modern, this also combos the Walking Ballista, so there's Heliod Company builds there too now. Commander and Brawl players are also very interested in this card. Number three is another card you won't find in draft packs. Grasping Giant goes down $1.37 to 273. Number two, Ashiok Sculptor of Fears down $1.80 to 287. Another card that's not in draft packs. This is the other Planeswalker deck, Planeswalker. But again, this is the non-foil copy that we're talking about today that you might find in collector boosters. And number one is the other Ashiok, Ashiok Nightmare Muse. It goes down 221 to 1156. Now, this card hasn't seen as much play as some people anticipated. That's why it's losing as much value as it is. And also, more copies are getting into circulation. A lot of packs are being cracked right now. That includes draft boosters, but also those collector boosters, remember. So you put the two together, and I do think this is going to lose a little more value before it stabilizes. But this is still seeing play in standard, and the meta is still young. Obviously, things could change. You'll find this in Saltai Ramp, Esper Hero, Saltai Midrange. In Pioneer, some control builds are trying it out. We'll have to see if that goes anywhere. And this is also seeing a little commander play too. Okay, time to move on to the top six standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Number six, Castle Art and Val, up 89 cents to 284. This card is doing pretty good right now in both Standard and Pioneer, and I would expect it maybe to climb a little more before it stabilizes, even though it is a rare, not a mythic from a recent set. You'll find this in Standard in Azori's Control, which is very popular right now. Also in Mono White Life Gain. In Pioneer, this is in Azori's Control, which is doing very well there too. Also in Mono White Devotion and some other builds. Number 5, Castle Lock Thwain goes up 99 cents to 617. Kind of the same story, but even more so with this card. When it comes to Standard, you're seeing this in various Sacrifice builds, Mono Black Devotion, Pioneer, Mono Black Aggro, Mono Black Vampires, Golgari Soulflayer, Demir Control. This is even seeing some modern play. Commander and Brawl too, there's a lot of mono black decks and also aggressive decks that want this. Number four is Ember Cleave, up $1.72 to sixteen nineteen. This card was losing value in between the two standard seasons, and I was a little surprised by that because I felt like this is just going to be a solid card regardless. Even outside of standard and Pioneer, it's been very, very good. So when it comes to standard, Mono Red Aggro is running this, Gruel Adventures as well. In Pioneer, this is in Big Red, which has been very popular, Gruel Aggro, Boros Knights, and more. And in Brawl and Commander, a lot of folks have been playing this in Sir Gwen Hero of Ashvale decks. Number three is Absorb. Two copies to talk about here. Ravnica Allegiance goes up $1.14 to $5.93. And the original one from Invasion goes up $1.79 to $13.34. So the reason this is going up, I kind of alluded to earlier, is Ori's Control doing well in both the Standard format and the Pioneer format. And those decks are running this card. Number two, Iron Scale Hydra. This is another one of those cards you won't find in draft boosters, but this one's going up in price, 208 to 876. The reason for that, pretty good Brawl and Commander card. A lot of people are playing this with Gargos Vicious Watcher right now. Number one, Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath, up 364 this week to 2764. The big card of the Theros Beyond Death set right now. And this is seeing play in Standard, but also Pioneer. And right now, because of the event going on this weekend, there's a lot of eyes on this card and a lot of people trying to pick it up. Now, when it comes to Standard, though, it's in Teamer Reclamation, Simic Ramp, and Pioneer, this is in Niv Delight, which is a huge deck in the format right now. Also in Saltai Delirium, Simic Ramp. Sees a lot of modern play, too. Amulet Titan, Bant Snowblade, Titan Field, Saltai Urza, and more. And another card that you see a lot of Brawl and Commander players picking up, too. A couple examples of popular builds this fits into easily. Chalane Teller of Tales, Yurok the Desecrated, and more. And if you watched Game Nights recently or the Command Zone podcast, you saw the Euro deck featured there. And yeah, the deck built around this card looked really good too, so a lot of people are trying to pick it up just for that reason. 
Okay, on to Pioneer and your top five Pioneer legal cards that have lost value this week, starting with number five, Supreme Verdict. This is the one from Iconic Masters. It goes down 94 cents to $18. Now, this did get reprinted in Mystery Boosters, so there are some additional copies out there, but this has been very popular in the Pioneer format, and it has been going up pretty aggressively, so I think this is just, for the most part, some retraction and normalization you're seeing, but you'll find this in Niv Delight, as always Control, Lotus Breach, and much more there. This sees some modern play too, and Vance Snowblade, Azorius Control, and other decks in that format too. And remember, this is a huge commander card as well. Number four is Sliver Hive Lord. More of a commander card though than a pioneer card. This is the one from Magic 2015. It goes down 97 cents to 31.97. Pretty hard this week to find cards that are seeing a lot of pioneer play that are going down in value significantly, but this does make our list being pioneer legal. And of course, this particular card has had a weird tug of war going on recently. It was reprinted in Mystery Boosters, which made the value go down, but then Kaleidoscope Killers reprinted Sliver Overlord, which made a lot of people decide they wanted to build some Commander Sliver decks, and guess what? This card started to go back up again. So I do think you're seeing some normalization here. You might think that with those Mystery Boosters coming to stores in March, which is getting pretty close now, that maybe cards like this might lighten up a little bit. And I do think that's going to be the case as we move closer to March and get into March and packs do get cracked. But at the same time, you're going to notice in this video, there are cards that were reprinted in Mystery Boosters that are still going up. Number three is Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth from Ultimate Masters, down a dollar oh five to twenty one thirteen. Again, a card that's stabilizing, finding its price point after some recent spiking. And this particular one is seeing a ton of play in Pioneer right now. Mono Black Aggro, Mono Black Vampires, Golgari Soulflayer, and much more there. Sees modern play in Golgari Yawgmoth, which is popular too right now. You'll find this card in Legacy a lot too, and don't forget another huge commander card here. A lot of times that will drive prices on its own, so I do think this will stabilize quickly. Number two, Sylvan Caryatid, down $1.91 to $11.69. Similar story here, this card spiked pretty aggressively last week because it's in a lot of big Pioneer decks. We're getting a little normalization this week. What tends to happen is if I have these cards in my collection and I'm not using them, I see the spike, I think maybe this is a good time to trade them away sell them, get some store credit, what have you, to help me build the deck I'm trying to build. So that's why many times when you see a big spike, the next week you'll see retraction like this. Although I would not expect this card to go back down to where it was anytime soon. As a matter of fact, I do think this could stabilize quickly and maybe even start climbing again. But again, you're going to find this in big pioneer decks, Niv to Light, Golgari Soulflayer, Jeskai Ascendancy, and more. Number one is Starfield of Nyx, down 330 to $13. This is seeing some Pioneer play. There was a lot of excitement for about a week or two with Theros coming out. A lot of folks thought, okay, maybe there's a Pioneer deck there. And it did start to come together as a Doom Foretold deck. And this is seeing play in Doom Foretold builds. We'll have to kind of see how they do long term. Right now, I do think because this spikes so aggressively, it will continue to lose value. This is also seeing some increased commander play now too, though, because of the cards from Theros Beyond Death that are enchantments or care about enchantments. Okay, onto your top six Pioneer legal cards that have gained value this week. Between the big tournaments last weekend and the big tournament this weekend, there's a lot of people that are watching these Pioneer cards closely, and we're seeing some more cards spiking this weekend already from the action from yesterday. Number six is the Scarab God, up $1.31 to $31.58. This is seeing a little more Pioneer play now, showing up in the sideboards of some really big decks like Demir Inverter, and this also sometimes shows up in Niv to Light sideboards. Demir Control is running this in the main, typically one copy, and you'll find it in a few other decks in the format too. Of course, we know this has been a popular commander card for a while as well. Number five is Selfless Spirit, up $1.46 to $9.99. Spirit builds have been very, very good recently in Pioneer. They looked great last week, got a little overshadowed maybe with all the buzz around the Demir Inverter deck. This week, a lot of people anticipate that those decks could perform better than Demir Inverter. We'll have to see what happens, but I think regardless, coming out of this weekend, a lot more people are going to understand how good these builds are. Aside from Spirits builds, this is in some other places, too, in the format. You'll find these in Mono White Devotion, Heliod Company builds, Mono White Life Gain, and Modern, of course, Spirit builds are good there, too. And also, this is in Heliod Combo there, as well. Number four, Abbot of Carol Keep. This goes up $1.59 to two forty-two. This has been a workhorse card in the Pioneer format for a while now. But I think people are just noticing it, probably because of the coverage over the last couple weekends. You're going to find this in Big Red, which has been very popular, as well as Mono Red Aggro, and other decks in the format. Number three is Mutavolt. This is the one for Morning Tide, though. A little bit harder to find in good condition. And this goes up $2 this week to 
Now, this is in a ton of huge Pioneer decks right now. Mono Black Aggro, Is It in Soul, Spirits Builds, Big Red, Mono Black Vampires, and more. This also sees Modern and Legacy play, and again, another solid Commander card here. Number two is Gideon of the Trials, up 319 to 709. This is another card that's showing up in a lot of big decks, sometimes sideboard, sometimes main, but you're going to find this in SRAM Auras, Mono White Devotion, Mono White Life Gain, Humans, Fire Super Friends. Sometimes you'll find this in Heliod Company, White Weenie, Azorius Control. This feels like it's showing up in more and more places all the time. Number one, Jace Burns Prodigy goes up 424 to 3381. Wow, okay, so this card is having a bounce back week. Initially, it spiked heavily when the Pioneer format was announced. A lot of people anticipated it would be good, but it never really broke through in a big way, and it has been losing value ever since. So what's going on this week? Well, it is seeing more Pioneer play. One of the reasons is Demir Inverter. About half the time, there's a copy of this in the sideboard, which really doesn't sound like a lot, but so many people were trying to build Demir Inverter last week that I do think that is part of the reason the card's going up in value like this. This is also in some decks that are doing a little better this week too, like Demir Control and Salti Delirium. This also continues to see a little vintage play, and last week saw a little modern play too. I do think this card most likely will retract next week, but I do think maybe it is closer to stabilizing. Okay, on to Modern and your top six Modern legal cards that have lost value this week. So Modern continues to be a little bit slow, but is showing signs of a comeback. We saw that last week too. I do think the banning of Oko has brought a lot of people back to the format. We'll have to kind of see where the meta goes now, of course, with the changes that occurred. But a lot of the older decks are back on top again. You're seeing Jun doing well, Tron doing well. If people have those decks assembled, that's going to encourage them to jump back in perhaps. Now, aside from that, Pioneer has drawn a lot of attention off the format. We do know that, especially over the last couple weekends where Pioneer has been televised. Also, those mystery boosters are hanging over people's head because when they go to stores in March, there's 121 foil cards that are being reprinted that were not in the convention edition. So we don't know what those cards are yet, although a few of them have been leaked if you've been paying attention. But there's a chance some of them could be maybe big modern staples. And if that's the case, it might be a bad time to buy, which means a lot of people are laying off some of the more expensive cards. Okay, number six is Scalding Tar, and this is the one from Zendikar. It goes down to $1.72 to $72.81. Still very expensive, but fetches have been relatively soft recently, with more people paying attention to Pioneer than Modern. And of course, this is still a big part of mana bases in the Modern format. Dredge, Burn, Gift Storm, Grixis, Death Shadow, and much more. Sees Legacy and Vintage play too. Number five is Trinisphere. This goes down $1.74 to thirty eight thirty nine. This has been losing value. Percentage of play in general has been down on this card. This does see some slight modern sideboard play and continues to see a fair amount of play in Legacy and even in Vintage where it is restricted. Number four is the original Stronghold copy of Ensnaring Bridge. It goes down $1.75 to thirty six oh five. Similar to the previous card, again, percentage of play has just been down on this. Now, this still will show up in Tron builds and the sideboard usually is like a one of. Grixis Warza usually runs a copy of this in the main. That deck has been doing a little bit better recently, of course, with the meta shift. And this does continue to see Legacy and Vintage play too to some degree, but I do think this copy, as well as all the other copies of the card, will lose a little more value before they do stabilize. Number three, Dark Confidant from Modern Masters, down 201 to 5105. Another card that is seeing a little more play again, but I do think it has to kind of normalize and find its price point. You're going to find this in Jund, The Rock, and of course some other decks in the format. Sees Legacy play too. Number two is Sword of Fire and Ice, the original one from Dark Steel. It goes down 203 to 7639. So this one's kind of interesting because, yes, it is seeing a little more modern play, but not as much as, say, Sword of Feast and Famine is seeing. Oko is gone now. That did clear the path for Stoneforge Mystic to do better, but this isn't necessarily always the sort of choice. With that being said, it is seeing more play. Usually you'll find it in like Bant Blade or Bant Tempo and some of the others. It does continue to see Legacy play too. And of course it has been a popular Commander card and that will continue, especially with Sir Gwyn Hero of Ashvale out there. But regardless, I do expect this to lose some more value before stabilization. Number one is Jace the Mind Sculptor. This is the one from Masters 25 down 254 to 10344. Now this is seeing more play with Oko gone. Azorius Control, Bant Snowblade, Bant Blade, Bant Tempo is in Control. Also sees Legacy and Vintage play too. However, I do think with a lot of people playing Pioneer and having that competition there, a lot of folks are reconsidering what the top price for a modern card should be. Maybe they don't want to pay $125, $140 for a card like this, especially the reprinting as opposed to the original copy. So I do think maybe this card sits around $100 for a while 
and then we'll kind of see what happens. If this were to get reprinted in the next six months or so, I think in that case it would lose a lot of value. Okay, onto your top five modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Kind of the opposite of Pioneer here. Some of the cards going up in value are going to be more Commander cards than modern cards. Number five is Valakut the Molten Pinnacle. It goes up $1.59 to $17.22. Now, this one is a true modern card that is performing very well right now. Some very popular decks like Amulet Titan, Titan Field, Titan Shifter all running it, and others too. Number four is Cloudstone Curio, up $1.71 to $26.40. More of a Commander card, obviously, than a modern card. This is a card you'll find a lot of times in Animar decks, but what's been pushing it recently is Trilane Teller of Tales. Number three, another commander card, Training Grounds. It goes up 240 to 3278. This is one of those cards that once it does get reprinted will probably lose a lot of value, but in the meantime, I think it's going to keep creeping up. This is great with Slivers, and of course, like I mentioned earlier, Sliver Overlord, Ghetto Reprinting, and Kaleidoscope Killers. This is also very good with another recent card, Kenrith the Return King. Number two is Sword of Feast and Famine, up 282 to 6179. This is the one from Mirrored and Besieged. And yeah, this is seeing more play now with Stoneforge Mystic beating out Sword of Fire and Ice, like we mentioned earlier. You'll find this in Azorius Control, Banned Snowblade, and more. Also sees Legacy play, and it's a huge Commander card. Speaking of Commander, number one is Plague of Vermin. It goes up 673 to 798 this week. Wow. Okay, so first and foremost, of course, Year of the Rat Secret Layer is out there. People pick that up, and now they're thinking, okay, maybe it's time to build that Rat Commander deck. This is a nice inclusion there. And because of that, the card is just disappearing quickly. But even before that, people were picking this card up to play alongside Ayara, first of Loch Thwain and Commander. Considering this is a Shadow More Rare, I'll use my one per video. During this time period of Magic, there weren't as many cards printed because there was a recession, not as many packs were opened. And because of that, some of these rares, when they get a little attention on them, they tend to get spiky like this one. And I do think this is most likely a natural buyout, just kind of happened after Year of the Rat. Although, it could be a targeted buyout too, it did happen very quickly. Okay, onto the Vintage Spotlight, this is where we talk about cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. We're going to begin again by looking at those cards that were banned in Modern recently, that are now cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, and Commander. The first one is Oko Thief of Crowns, goes down 96 cents to 1765 this week. Mycosynth Lattice is the next one, Battle Bond goes down $1.88 to 3547. Darksteel down to $31 to $40.73. And finally, Mox Opal, Modern Masters 2015 down $514 to $68.90. Scars of Mirrodin down $721 to $69.99. So with all three of these cards, shop around if you do want to pick them up, especially Mox Opal. This is still dropping pretty aggressively. Remember, the prices we look at on the Market Watch are average prices, so you can definitely do better than $70 on this card. Okay, onto the cards going up in value. This is Chain of Vapor, the copy from Commander 2016, which has dried up a little bit. It goes up $1.63 this week to $9.75. This does see Legacy and Vintage play, but I think the main reason it has been moving is Commander. Last week we talked a lot about that Sushi Hulk deck, which of course is a competitive Commander deck. And again, you're going to see a lot of cards that are in those builds showing up on both this list and the Commander list. So it does show you that there's a lot of people interested right now in competitive commander, maybe just generally in some cases, like this card can fit into a lot of decks. But I don't think it's a coincidence that most of the cards that we're seeing going up that are competitive commander cards are also cards that are in Sushi Hulk. I do think Thassa's Oracle has really pushed a lot of people in that direction. So ultimately for this card, I do think you'll see some retraction soon because the other copy is a lot cheaper, but at least for right now, it does continue to go up. Survival of the Fittest from Exodus. This goes up $1.64 to eighty-five fifty-seven. This is on the reserve list, but it did get a reprinting as a Judge promo and foil before they closed that loophole on the reserve list. Now, of course, this is the namesake card of vintage survival decks, but sometimes you'll find this in Sushi Hulk, too. Next, we have Demonic Tutor from Revised. It goes up $1.79 to $32. This card did get reprinted in Mystery Boosters. That's worth noting. Sees a lot of vintage play. It's a huge commander card, casual as well as competitive. And again, remember with these tutors that fit the colors, yeah, you might find this in Sushi Hog. Goblin Settler from Starter 1999, and those cards are getting harder and harder to find in good condition. This is yet to see a reprint. It goes up 202 to 4248 this week. You'll find this in Legacy Goblins decks a lot of the time. Also remember, Commander Goblins got a little bit of a push recently because of the Explosion Sound Secret Layer. Mana Drain is next. This is the one from Iconic Masters, up 216 to 10140 as it breaks the $100 mark. Another huge commander card, and again, another card you'll find in competitive commander decks like Sushi Hall. 
Mana Vault, this is the one from Ultimate Masters. Great vintage and commander card. It goes up 255 to 4113 this week. Tropical Island from Revised on the reserve list. It goes up 257 to 29997. And again, you're seeing a few of these revised dual lands creeping up a little bit. Doomsday from 6th edition goes up 264 to 720. This is getting pushed by Thassa's Oracle. In Legacy, there's a Saltai Doomsday deck running that card. In Vintage, there's an Esper one. And of course, this is also seeing increased commander play because of that card. And this got a Command Zone podcast mentioned this week, which could have brought some additional attention to it too. Bayou from Revised on the reserve list, another one of these lands. It goes up 279 to 263.32. Sarah Sanctum on the reserve list. It goes up 282 to 99.99. Now this does show up in Legacy Enchantress builds and it has seen some increased play in Commander recently with Theros Beyond Death bringing cards that are enchantments and or care about enchantments. Plateau, another revised dual land on the reserve list that goes up 357 to 12502. Mox Diamond from Stronghold on the reserve list, but it did get a reprinting from the Vault Relics before again they closed that loophole in the reserve list. It goes up 657 to 27504 this week. Great Legacy card, huge Commander card, and again another card you might find in Sushi Hulk. Don't know if that's a coincidence. Mana Crypt, this is the original media promo copy. It goes up 873 to 24398. Great Vintage and Commander card. You might find this in Sushi Hulk too, but I don't know if that alone is pushing the price of this card. It's just very popular overall. Next is Wheel of Fortune on the reserve list, but it did get reprinted one more time as a judge promo again before they close that loophole. The revised copy goes up $1.23 to $98.99. Unlimited goes up $25 to $3.25 this week. Great vintage card, great $93.94 card, but a lot of commander players are interested in this right now, maybe a little more than usual, because again, a new card has inspired some people to pick this up. You take this, Lion's Eye Diamond, and Underworld Breach, and you can just mill everybody. Throw Thassa's Oracle into the mix, and you might be able to take the game. Black Lotus from Unlimited, of course, on the reserve list. Now, technically, this is going up $1,999.98 to $17,499.97. Is that accurate at all? No, it's not. What's happening here is because so few Black Lotuses are sold in good condition on any given week, there's not a lot of market data out there. So if you go to your big websites, the only way they can really track the data is what people are asking for the card. And because of that, if somebody asks for a really high amount, it can skew all the data. And that's what's happening here. Occasionally a posting for this card goes up at a really high price. Maybe they're just looking for an offer. But regardless, it throws off the data. If you were really interested in a lightly played unlimited Black Lotus, you would probably pay closer to 9000 Okay, onto the Commander Spotlight. I know we talked about a lot of cards already that are good Commander cards, but there's a lot more to talk about, so I'm going to go kind of quickly here. SRAM Senior Edificer up at $1.02 to 513 This is seeing increased Commander play with Citizen Champion and some of the other Theros cards coming out, but I think the main reason this is moving right now is Pioneer. The SRAM Auras deck has been putting up some good results recently, even in some big tournaments, and has gained momentum. Royal Elemental of $1.02 to 765. This has seen increased play with Yarok the Desecrated, Omnith Locus of the Royal, and most recently Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Thrumming Stone is back. It goes up $1.02 to $30.34. Typically, this isn't a great commander card, obviously, unless you're playing a deck that has cards that let you break the one copy rule. Shadowborn Apostle, Persistent Petitioners, and yes, Relentless Rats. So with the Year of the Rat Secret Layer coming out, a lot of people are looking to pick this up now. Nicol Bolas the Ravager goes up at $1.05 to $27.91. This is a card that's been losing value. It's been showing up on our Pioneer list for a number of weeks actually recently. However, it does bounce back a little bit this week. Still seeing a little Pioneer play. We'll have to see if that goes anywhere. But in Commander, it has been popular, again because of Kaleidoscope Killers and the recent reprinting of the Ur-Dragon. Next is Dragon Broodmother up at $1.10 to $18.25. Kind of the same story here. Another card that has been inspired a little bit by that reprinting of the Ur-Dragon. Aura Shards, this is the one from Commander, and it did get a reprinting in Mystery Boosters. It goes up $1.13 to $19. Another example of a Commander card seeing more play because of Theros enchantment strategies. Cyclonic Rift from Commander 2014, it goes up $1.13 to $22.82. I think here is another case of a particular copy of a card drying up, but this is one of the biggest Commander cards out there. Sees play all the time in various builds. Also sees a little Pioneer play in Simic Ramp and sometimes some other decks there. Little Modern play too. And this did get mentioned in an Atrata the Silencer deck tech from Talarian Community College this week. That could have brought a little more attention to the card as well. 
Kokusho, The Evening Star. This is the original one from Champions of Kamigawa. It goes up $1.14 to $13.24. So this is another dragon, but this sees Commander play in a lot of different types of builds. Mono Black, like Carrick Son of Yawgmoth. Aggro, like Revan Predator Captain. Sacrifice builds, like Tesa Karlov, and a lot more. Thassa, God of the Sea, goes up $1.15 to twenty two fifty one. Seeing more Commander play with gods and enchantments from Theros. This is also seeing a little Mono Blue Devotion play in Pioneer. Kalidas, Trader of Get. This goes up $1.17 to $29.44. Again, you have a card here that is seeing some increased commander play because of cards like Carrick Son of Yawgmoth, Kethis of the Hidden Hand, Ayara First of Loch Thwain, but I do think Pioneer is probably driving this more than anything. You'll find this in the sideboard of Demir Inverter, which of course we know is huge right now. Also in the sideboard of Mono Black Aggro. This is in the main of Mono Black Vampires, and it's in many other decks in the format too. Also see some modern play as well. Copy Artifact from Revised on the reserve list. It goes up $1.18 to $28. Solid commander card and builds like Urza Lord High Artificer, but just generally good. Archangel Thune, Iconic Masters up $1.20 to twenty one seventy seven. Magic 2014 up $1.22 to eighteen seventy nine. This is seeing more play now with Heliod Sun crowned out there. And this is also seeing some Pioneer play in Mono White Life Gain. Jet Medallion from Tempest goes up $1.23 to eighteen ninety nine. All these medallions are great in Commander. This one got especially hot when Carrick Son of Yawgmoth came out a while back. But now it's heating up again, and there's a reason for it. Year of the Rat Secret Lair. A lot of people are building around those cards now. Next is Vampiric Tutor from Eternal Masters. It goes up $1.28 this week to $81.63. That's getting high. Now, this is another tutor. Like we talked, these are fantastic, generally in Commander. And, yes, another card you might find in Sushi Hulk. Beyond that, though, this is a great vintage card. Craterhoof Behemoth from Modern Masters 2017 goes up $1.52 to $40.46. So this does see Modern Play and Mono Green Ramp, also sees Legacy Play, but I do think Commander is what's driving the price point here. Reese the Redeemed was reprinted not too long ago in Mystery Boosters. Obviously, those two cards play well together in Commander. Also, I think this is getting a little bit of a push from Nyx Bloom Ancient coming out in Theros too. Shizo Death Storehouse. This goes up $1.53 to $17.79. Now, this does see some Modern Play and cut this combo. Maybe that's part of the reason it's going up in value right now. But it's also seeing more playing Commander now because of Kethis and also because of the new gods in Theros. Scroll Rack from Tempest up $1.70 to $59.99. Another just really big Commander card here. Another dragon here with Prosh Sky Raider of Kerr from Commander 2013. It goes up $1.81 to $4.72. And this has seen some increased play recently because of Corvold Fakerous King. Here's another Commander card that lets you search. It's Spellseeker. It goes up $1.81 to $13.54. And another card you might find in Sushi Hulk. Expropriate. This is a huge commander card, but did get a mystery booster reprint and did go down in value a little bit, but it is bouncing back now up $1.97 to $44.96. Scourge of the Throne goes up $214 to $24.72. Some of these harder to find dragons, especially ones that haven't been reprinted recently, or in this case ever reprinted, are starting to creep up. The initial catalyst again being the reprinting of the Ur Dragon in Kaleidoscope Killers. Gilded Drake is up $350 to $76.40. This is on the reserve list, and it's a card you might find in Sushi Hulk. Savala, Heart of the Wilds from Conspiracy Take the Crown. It goes up 418 to 4880. And this was reprinted in Mystery Boosters, like a lot of the cards we've been talking about today. But it is going up quite a bit. Why is that? Well, partially because big mana decks are more popular right now with Nyx Bloom Ancient out there. But the main reason this is moving is because of the attention it got from the Command Zone podcast and Game Nights. This is in that Euro deck that has been very popular and featured in those shows. Diabolic Intent. This is a tutor that is especially good in a sacrifice build like Kervold Faker's King. This also shows up in Sushi Hulk builds. Battle Bond goes up $1.10 to $14.82. Plane Shift goes up $504 to 1901. Piracy from Starter 1999 goes up $18.94 to $37.08. That's quite a jump. Was this a targeted buyout or a natural buyout? I guess it could be either or, just because, like I said earlier, there's not a lot of Starter 1999 cards out there in the marketplace at any given time in good condition, so maybe those few copies dried up, and that's what you're seeing here. There is another copy of this printed in Portal Second Age, and that one doesn't appear to be bought out, at least not at the time of recording. Now, the card itself is a good commander card. I have seen people throw this in a pirate deck just for theming purposes and fun, but actually, you put this out before your big play, you might be able to prevent that big play from being countered. Okay, let's see what's happening in Popper with the Popper Spotlight. Mull Drifter. Now, this is the one from Commander 2018 this week. It goes up 14 cents to $1.73. You'll find this in Tron, Azorius Flicker, Scrag Control, and more. Also sees a little modern play. 
But it is a big commander card too, recently mentioned on the command zone when they were discussing that Euro deck. Also this week the card was mentioned in the video the professor did on that Atrata deck. Pyroblast from 5th edition goes up 14 cents to 297. You'll find this in Tron, Scred Fairies, Affinity, and also this does see Legacy and Vintage play as well. Priest of Titania, this is the one from Commander Anthology. It goes up 33 cents to 523. This got reprinted recently in Mystery Boosters, but still going up in value. You'll find this in the Elves deck and Pauper. Also, big mana decks are popular right now, like I mentioned, because of Thassa's Oracle and Nyx Bloom Ancient and a few other newer cards. On to the premium spotlight, and I'll give my disclaimer like I do every week real quickly. I don't like to spend a lot of time on rare promos or foils because sometimes you just get bad data. Like I mentioned earlier, if there's not a lot of sales on a given card, that data can be manipulated or just can be skewed. But I try to pick one card every week that feels like it's moving naturally with the market. This week I chose Absorb. Now the Invasion foil copy was staying completely flat, but the other copies were all going up. Pre-release promo was up 334 to 730. Of course, that's the foil copy you get at the pre-release with the date stamp. The promo pack non-foil card was going up 526 to 779. Ravnica Allegiance foil went up 628 to $11.27. And finally, the promo pack foil copy of the card went up 907 to $11.95. All right, that concludes the Market Watch for this week. And stay close to the market over the next few days because with that Pioneer tournament going on, there could be more cards creeping up in value, no doubt. Until next time, though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.